And so the holiness people get mad at me because I teach them that once you are in Christ Jesus, nothing can separate you from the love of God. When you mess up now that you're in Christ, you don't run from God. You run to him. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Because if you are in Christ Jesus, forgiveness is your portion. And God says, even when you mess up with me. See, you got to get this, y'all. You got to get this. God's grace is so amazing that even when you sin, God says, let's talk about it. Which means sin no longer separates me from God. If I'm his child, somebody say, if I'm his child. Which means now I am righteous before him and I'm not going up and down like the stock market. Some of your relationships are going up and down with God because you think when you're good or you did all your devotions or you did all your prayers or you lived right for that week, you think you're good with God. And then when you have a bad week and you mess up or you slip up, you think that you've lost fellowship with God. That is not true. The grace of God is so amazing that if you are his child, he says, when you're right, I got you. And when you're wrong, I got you. My grace no longer, uh, through my grace, listen to this verse. There is no longer condemnation between you and God. Which means when you mess up, there is therefore now no condemnation. That's why Jesus died. He says, come on in here. See, this is why I like the prodigal son. Uh, Oh, God. I can't get into that. I ain't got enough time. The prodigal son, uh, the the boy. I'm talking about the boy that left. I like that boy. that, that, That boy. That boy said, give me my inheritance. I want my stuff. He took his stuff, went into a far country, wasted it all. On riotous living says, what am I doing out here about to eat hog slop? I'm going back to my father's house. He heads back to his father's house. The father sees him a long way off. Sees him coming and tells everybody, go get the robe, go get the ring, go get the shoes, fire up that barbecue pit because my son is on his way back home. That other boy who's been at the house all this time is looking at this saying, now wait a minute. You mean to tell me you're about to give him back everything he just went out there to waste on harlots and stuff? That ain't right. He can't come back in here the same way he left. And the father looks at him and says, you don't understand that when my son left here, he might have broke fellowship with me, but not relationship with me. He's still, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He's still my child. And some of you, when you mess up, have let the devil beat you up thinking you don't deserve God's blessings on your life because you think God only bless you when you do right. I got a news flash for you. God was blessing you when you were in the club. That's how you got home. God was, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God was blessing you before you even got saved. God was delivering you before you even came to church. God was protecting you when you should have killed yourself. God didn't just start being good to you when you got saved. He been trying to be good to you your whole life. So don't get saved right now and believe it is your goodness that justifies you before God. I feel a deliverance right now. Because some of you have yet to recover from a mess up in your life. You failed miserably. You dropped the ball. You messed up. It's happened to all of us at one stage or another. But what you got to do is you got to believe in the blood. You got to believe that God has not changed his mind concerning you. And there is grace available for your life. Somebody just got delivered. Clap your hands and thank God for it. 
get back up. Walk right on back into that house and expect God's best. Because there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So now that I'm in Christ, sin doesn't separate me from God. When I mess up, I come boldly to the throne. I find grace to help in the time of need. I say, Father, teach me how not to do that. Teach me how not to live like that. That's why I get convicted. I get convicted because I'm born again. And now sin convicts me. But then Jude says we got to be careful though. Because the grace of God is so amazing, many will creep in and turn that into lasciviousness. And say, because God will forgive you, then go ahead and do what you want to do. No, 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 no. You can't do that either. Because number one, you post to be saved. That's number one. Number two, you cannot do that because even though sin through the grace of God removes condemnation, grace does not remove consequences. <laughs> sin will destroy you. And everything around you. And to preach that because God's grace is so amazing and God will forgive you. And that sin no longer separates me from God. So I can just do what I want to do. Live how I want to live. Love who I want to love. <laughs> and because we don't have preachers to preach it right. We have to tell them yes. God loves you. Yes, God's grace is extended towards you. But that's just half the Bible. Half the Bible is God loving you. The other half is you loving God. Oh, you don't hear me. Oh, no, no, there's another part of that. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. This is not just about using God's love for you. This is about you lavishing your love on him because of his grace and mercy. You are so grateful to God for not condemning you and giving you another chance. That grace does not remove truth. 